Earlier, we talked about a C2D converter that samples a continuous time signal XCT using sampling period T. Conceptually, a C2D converter can be understood as the interconnection of two parts. For the first part, the continuous time signal is multiplied by an impulse train represented by this ST. Then the resulting XST is passed through this block that converts a impulse train to a discrete time sequence. And that's the discrete time sequence after sampling. In the frequency domain, if we look at XS, XS is a continuous time signal, so it's Fourier transform X. S J omega J omega consists of shifts of x c and the shifts are two pi over t apart. Of course, there's the scalar one over t here, and x c J omega is related to x s through a frequency scaling. The equations look quite cumbersome, but fortunately. When the sampling frequency is large enough, their relationship is a much simpler one. Let's revisit an example that we have talked about earlier. Xc is a band-limited signal. Xc j omega is equal to zero for omega greater or equal to omega zero for some omega zero. So it's zero on this side and zero on this side. When the sampling frequency is larger or equal to two times omega zero, the same as this omega zero, the shifts of x c in this summation do not overlap. So, x c and shifts of x c by two pi over t, shifts of x c by minus two pi over t, these shifts do not overlap. As a result, if we just look at from minus pi over t to pi over t, this range, if we just look at omega in this range, x s is exactly the same as x c except a scalar of one over t. In this case, x c j omega, if we look at one period, is related to x c. In a simple manner, like so. Now let's talk about reconstruction. We know when the sampling frequency is larger than two times omega zero, x s is related to two x c, like so, for this frequency range. So let's first apply a sequence to impulse train block. Let's pass x in through this block sequence to impulse train, and at the output we get back x s t x s. So we are back to here. But now x s has many shifted copies of x c. It has x c and the shifts of x c, shifts of x c. How can we get back to only x c? We don't want other shifted copy. We only want this part. How can we do that? How can we extract only this copy and discard the rest? How about passing x s through a low pass filter that is equal to t only in the range minus pi over t to pi over t? Then then we will filter out. We can extract only this part. And this t will compensate for this scalar one over t. And at the output of the low pass filter, we would get only one copy of x c at the output. Let's summarize what we have learned so far using the sampling theorem. Let x c be a band limited signal. That is equal to zero when omega is greater or equal to omega zero. Then this continuous time signal x c can be reconstructed from samples x n if the sampling frequency 
is larger or equal to 2 omega 0. And this omega s is defined as 2 pi over t. It's called the sampling frequency. And in this case, the Fourier transform of the discrete time sequence xn here is related to xc like this. There's one, a scalar 1 over t and uh, a scaling of frequency for the range from minus pi to pi. And we call this omega 0 the Nyquist frequency and 2 times omega 0 the Nyquist rate. As long as the sampling frequency is larger or equal to the Nyquist rate, there won't be aliasing and Xc can be reconstructed from the discrete time sequence. How to reconstruct Xct? To reconstruct Xc, we can simply do it as we had discussed. We first convert sequence to impulse train. So now Xn is back to Xst and we pass the continuous time signal xs through the ideal low pass filter hr and then we can get back to xct the interconnection of the two sequence to impulse train converter and ideal low pass filter like this is what we call to these two together is what we call a d2c converter and uh, there's a t underneath to indicate that the sequence are converted to impulse train using this T. So the impulse train are T apart. The impulses are spaced apart by T seconds and uh, the ideal low pass filter has a height T and the cutoff frequency is pi over T. If the sampling theorem is satisfied, the sampling frequency is 2 times omega 0, then the reconstructed signal XR is the same as the continuous time signal that we take samples of XCT. Just now when we talked about reconstruction, we consider the problem in the frequency domain. We explain how in the frequency domain when a signal is sampled and uh, convert it to impulse train and pass through a low pass filter. If pass these two blocks, the D2C converter, if the sampling frequency is large enough, then the reconstructed signal XR is the same as XCT. That's all in the frequency domain. Now, let's look at the problem in the time domain and see how this happens. So we have a continuous time signal. XCT. We take samples every t seconds. So we have these samples. x1, x0, x1, x2, x3. This is a discrete time sequence. And now if we want to reconstruct xc, first we pass it through sequence to impulse train converter and we are back to xs. When we are back to xs, xs, Every sample is converted to an impulse. And the value the impulse carry is the same as the value of Xn. And Xs is an impulse train, right? So all these values are equal to zero. All these are equal to zero, right? This is Xs. And now we pass Xs through an ideal low pass filter like so the ideal low pass filter in the frequency domain has impulse response written like this is a um, sync function when we pass xs through the ideal low pass filter we get an xr we get the xr signal and if the sampling frequency is large enough we would have xr the same as x Yes. So, all the value in between 0 and t are interpolated and now successfully interpolated. So, all the value between t and 2t, all the value between 2t and 3t, all these values are interpolated back. So, how are those values interpolated? Let's take a closer look to see what happens between xs 
and XR. What is XR? XR is simply the interpolation of HR and the XS of T. XS is the impulse train that has impulses spaced apart by T, and the value carried by the impulses are equal to the value of the sequence. So we're converting HR and such an impulse train. When we convolve HR with the individual impulse, what do we have? We get HR again, but now it carries a delay. This delay and T. Here we have drawn the sync function HR of T for the range from minus 3t to 3t. Of course, it doesn't end here. It continues on and on and on. But we just draw this part in this xr. It has this term. So we can draw each term separately. For example, it has this term x0 hrt. So it is simply a scaled version of this hr we have drawn here. Scale it by x0. After the scaling of x0, the height here, it was 1 at 0, now becomes x0 at uh, 0. This is x0 hrt, this term, this term here. And uh, we can continue like so. We can draw each term. Now let's try it, this term. When n equal to 1, we would have a shift of hr by t. So we need to shift hr to the right by t. The sync function was centered at 0, hrt. Now it's centered at t, center at t, and the height is h1 of t. Similarly, we can draw h2, hrt minus 2t. The sync function is now centered at 2t here, and uh, this point becomes x2. And we add up all these terms together. When we add up all these terms in the summation, and uh, if the sampling frequency is large, we will get back XCT. And how do we get XCT? It's just through the interpolation of all these shifts of sync function. With the interpolation of the sync function, we can get back the continuous time signal XCT if the sampling frequency is large enough. So this HR here is called the reconstruction filter.